Hi everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog. Notifications are a central part of the iPhone experience and always have been, but outside of the fact that notifications do show up, most people don't know the details about the exact customizations and options for notifications on the iPhone. Today, we're going to take a look at notifications on the iPhone, what they do, how they work, as well as how to manage them to minimize distractions with Do Not Disturb and Focus, a feature that iOS 15 gave us last year. Let's go ahead and check it out in detail. Starting off with the settings. So there are four ways that notifications are kind of interacted with and come up on your phone. So if we go into a random app, let's just say Airbnb, we see we have the ability to just turn notifications on or off completely for a specific app. But then we also see a few options. Lock screen is simple. The notification comes up on your lock screen and lights up your display. Notification center means that it stays in the notification center and aggregates with your other notifications and just kind of sticks around in the background. Banners are what alert you when you're using the phone. So it pops up at the top of your screen and you can turn that on or off. Now within the banners, you can choose whether it be temporary or persistent. Temporary is the typical one, pops up on your phone, a few seconds later it goes away. But there's also kind of the more old school persistent, which if a notification pops up on your phone, it won't go away until you swipe it away or clear it. And you also have badges, and badges is that little red number next to your application that tells you how many alerts or notifications you have for that app. That's pretty standard, but you can turn that off if you don't want that number to be constantly teasing you when you're using your phone for a specific application. And of course, you can change whether the app alerts you via sound or not, and this will change depending on if your phone is on mute or vibrate. So of course, the down position is mute or silent, and the up position is ringer, and that'll change depending on what you have set up under sounds and haptics. So just a quick note about the sounds and haptics menu. If you have vibrate on ring turned on, that means that when you have the mute rocker turned on the upward position, your phone will both make sounds and vibrate when you get an alert, a phone call, whatever. If you have vibrate on silent turned on, this means that when you flip the switch down, your phone will vibrate but not make a sound when you get an alert. I think this is probably what most people have, but if you want it completely silent, then you turn this off. And if you want to just make a sound and not vibrate, you can turn that off as well. Now the ringer and alerts volume slider can be a bit confusing for people. Now if you have this change with button setting turned off, this means that your alerts, your notifications, and your alarms will always come in at the same volume. And you can change that right here. And this is where you change it. However, if you turn this feature on, all of a sudden your volume buttons change the loudness of the alerts coming in. And you can see the little volume toggle up top says ringer. Now when you go into notification center, this volume slider is not the same as the buttons. This then becomes just for media. So when you're watching something on Twitter or YouTube or whatever, this slider is different than this volume button. And this changes how loud your phone calls, alarms and stuff like that comes in. And you can see that. Now I have this turned on because I like a set volume for my alarms, stuff like that. I don't like being able to accidentally have my phone on mute um, and then miss an alarm because of that feature. And those reflect what happens when you have sounds turned on. Now next is a security slash privacy feature. Show previews is an option that lets you control what is visible on your lock screen. So if you get a text from somebody, you can choose whether or not other people can see what the text says and, and other apps as well. You can change this on a system-wide basis, but also an app-by-app -app basis by going into a specific application and choosing whether you show previews or not. So there's three options, always. This means that people will always be able to see what your notification says. When unlocked, that means when you have your face ID or touch ID, you will be able to see what is said in that notification or never. So you can only see it when you click on that alert. I think most people probably keep it at when unlocked. This means that when you scan your fingerprint or scan your face ID, you will then be able to see what the alert is and read your message or the contents of the notification. There's also a new scheduled summary option. And this feature basically allows you to choose set times of the day when applications alert you. So say 8 a.m. when you wake up and then at dinner time or something. So if there are apps that are not urgent and you still wanna see the notification at some point through the day, but it doesn't need to interrupt you, you can throw it in this list 
and then you will only see notifications from that at set times throughout the day, and you can add or remove applications to this list. I don't use schedule summary, but that is an option right there. So every notification you get has three options. You can tap and hold, which will expand the notification, and then if it has any other options, those will pop up right there. So for reminders, if we tap and hold, we can mark it as completed, do some other things, that varies app by app. But you can also swipe all the way right, and if you keep swiping, you will be able to clear that. But if you only go halfway, you'll be able to click the options. And from there, you can mute that notification for one hour. Say you're getting bombarded by group me text or WhatsApp. You can mute it for an hour. You can mute it for the rest of the day. You can add it to the summary view that we just talked about. You can configure the settings within that application. You can view the notification settings in your settings app or you can just turn off notifications completely for that app. So this gives you really quick access to changing settings for an app as notifications come in. So kind of real time adjustments for notifications. All right, but now for the fun stuff, do not disturb focus and time sensitive notifications on your iPhone as well as your iPad and Mac now. So Do Not Disturb has been around since iOS 6 and basically it just prevents notifications from interrupting you uh, on your phone. But with iOS 15 last year, we have several really powerful new features. So there's several ways of turning on Do Not Disturb. You can tell Siri, you know, turn on Do Not Disturb, including while your phone is not connected to the internet, which is a nice feature. You can tell Siri. Uh, you can also go into settings and you can go into it's now called focus. So you go into focus and turn on a specific mode or most common method is going to be going to notification center by swiping down. And there you have your options. By default, it's what it used to look like. It just says do not disturb right there. But if you hold on that, you get more options. And there you get these different focus profiles, which is what it's called. Um, and you can customize these. You can add or delete any of these. Um, you can turn them on for a set period of time, you know, for one hour until tomorrow morning uh, or whatever, right? So that's pretty good too. And you can add new ones down here. So let's go into these settings and see how this works. So within these settings, we can customize a lot. So for one, we can choose if we want certain people to be able to still notify us, even when we have this do not disturb turned on. So maybe an important contact, um, somebody that you're expecting a call from that day, you can temporarily put them on this list. Uh, maybe an emergency contact that you always want to be able to contact you, whatever. You can also choose certain apps that can always notify you. Um, for instance, Slack, if maybe you only get a few messages from Slack um, and you need to always stay on top of those, you can let those bypass Do Not Disturb. So you can customize exactly what can or cannot contact you in these situations. Now under the people settings, there's specific settings for calls. So you can let everyone contact you. You can let only your contacts and those saved numbers you have call you. You can have only your favorites, which you can choose from in the phone app, you can add favorites, or you can have no one be able to give you a phone call, which is what I have. But you can then allow repeated calls. So if someone calls you twice within three minutes, the phone call will go through. So you do have really good flexibility for what phone calls can and cannot interrupt you when you have Do Not Disturb on. Now, if you have people turned on, they will always be able to get through this setting regardless of what this calls option is. Now you also have this ability to share your focus status. Now this is cool because it tells other people who have iOS 15 on their phones, obviously this doesn't work with Android, but it will say, you know, Harris has uh, his notifications silence. Um, this allows you to let people know that you might not be responding or seeing the message right away. But this also gives them the ability to bypass this and click deliver anyway, and it will still go to your phone. Now it's possible that it won't interrupt you, um, because of your settings, but it will go through. Now what's really powerful, super powerful about this is that you can change your home screen based off the mode that you have turned on. So you'll remember that with iOS 15, if you hold down a blank space of your home screen and then you tap the little dots at the bottom, uh, you can customize what pages do and do not show up on your home screen. So say I want um, my three home pages here, I've got my, my standard home page, then all these apps and then some widgets, right? Um, but maybe I want to be more simple and I only want uh, these widgets, right? So you can customize what your home screen is. But you can design a home page to just be set up for a specific do not disturb or focus mode. So I have one that I only use for do not disturb 
and it just has a few apps that I might need when I'm working, uh, a few prayer apps and some reading apps and basic stuff like maps, um, calendar, weather, things that won't ever really interrupt me or distract me, but that I might still need access to when I'm using my phone on Do Not Disturb. So if you click custom pages in this option right here, this allows you to choose which home screens show up when this mode is turned on. Now you can also hide notification badges. So this little 27 down there by messages, if you turn this on, it will not feature that and you won't be distracted by seeing how many notifications you have in case you get any new ones. So let's look at this. So this is what my home screen looks like now with no do not disturb turned on. And then if I turn on my work one, all of a sudden it got rid of all those other pages. So I just have this and also eliminated the badges from my apps so I don't have anything distracting me. So as soon as I unlock my phone, I go to my home screen, there's no badges and there's only a few apps and no widgets. And this is a really powerful way to customize exactly what you're looking for out of your phone during different modes. Now you also have the ability to change your lock screen. You can dim it, make it a little bit darker, less distracting. Um, and then you can also choose whether or not you want silence notifications to show up on your lock screen. So again, this gives you more power to minimize distractions. So you can see what this looks like with this dark lock screen, this dimmed lock screen with this do not disturb mode. And if I turn this off, you can see it goes back to my normal lock screen. You can also schedule this automatically. So you can have this turn on at the same time every day. But you can also do when you open certain apps, say maybe you open the Kindle app and you don't want to be notified uh, of anything, it'll automatically turn on do not disturb or a focus mode. Or when you arrive somewhere, when you get to church, this will automatically kick on, for instance, and you won't be notified of anything. This is really powerful as well. And you can also turn on smart activation, which will kind of use uh, Siri to try to figure out the best times for these different modes. Now jumping back to the apps section of Do Not Disturb and Focus, you may remember seeing this time sensitive notification. And this means that when you have an application, so let's go back to notifications and we'll say Apple Store, it'll give you this little option to turn on or off time sensitive notifications. This means that you can designate certain apps to be time sensitive and it will bypass your notification settings automatically if you have it set up to allow time sensitive notifications. So for my work profile, I do not have this turned on. But in my do not disturb setting, I do. So if I go into apps, I can turn on time sensitive so that any applications that are marked time sensitive can bypass automatically. So for me, this means things like reminders, uh, in case I have a reminder to move my car um, before it gets towed, um, maybe a, a calendar so I get if I have an alert for an event, it'll still alert me so I don't miss a meeting. But then also maybe Uber, so I don't miss seeing that my Uber has arrived just because I have Do Not Disturb on. So you can go in and turn on time sensitive notifications for specific applications that you want to be able to alert you even if you have Do Not Disturb turned on. So the way I have this set up, I use Do Not Disturb for kind of a, a light mode. So people can still notify me. I'll add a couple people to this list, it's kind of important contacts. A couple apps can notify me. It doesn't change my home screen. It doesn't change my lock screen, anything like that. But then I use work as a, a much heavier one. So uh, it does change my home screen. It does dim my lock screen, but it also does not allow anybody to contact me, does not allow repeat calls, and does not let any app or any time sensitive notification get through. So when I have work turned on, it basically makes it impossible for me to see that somebody's contacted me. So this is great if I'm you know, doing a 45 minute period of work and I just don't want any distractions, right? I'm taking a test, things like this. Well, I wanna make sure I don't get any notifications. It's pretty much impossible for anybody to contact me and reach me. Now I have two quick tips. One, if you go into your contacts application and you click edit and you go into ringtone, you can actually turn on the emergency bypass feature. And this means that if this person calls you, no matter whether your phone's on do not disturb, no matter whether it's on mute or the volume, if they call you, it will go through and it will make a sound. So this is great for like a strictly emergency line, or maybe you wanna guarantee that you don't miss your boss's phone call at a certain point, you can turn this on temporarily. Uh, this is a really kind of uh, absolute feature. So if you turn this on, you will get notified and your phone will ring um, no matter what your settings are. So that's a kind of cool feature for emergencies or, or very specific circumstances. Secondly, if you go into an individual contact and in messages and you 
click the options, you can change whether or not you share your focus status with that person specifically. So say somebody kind of abuses the share focus status and they're always trying to alert you uh, regardless of your status, uh, you can turn that off for that specific person and they will no longer see that you are in Do Not Disturb. So that is Do Not Disturb and Focus on the iPhone. It's really powerful and it allows you to customize notifications more than ever. Let me know what you think about this, if you have any questions or comments, but thanks so much for watching.